Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I'm gonna do a new old computer build. Like most people who do YouTube videos or repairs things, I do need a computer to run some of my tools, stuff like that. So what I want to do is basically make a system that is very low cost, that can do most of the thing my lab computer can do, that I have here when I'm recording. But also do some of the things my normal workstation computer does, uh, where I do the actual encoding of videos and stuff like that, the video editing. And I do also have a laptop, which is obviously my most portable thing, but it has Intel graphics, so it's a bit limited. And uh, when I'm um, when I'm at some place uh, with my laptop, I, I'm on, always on AC power anyway. So the idea was uh, to build something that will fit my backpack, and this should fit in my backpack. We're gonna make a quad core i5 build is the plan, maybe upgrade i7 later. It's a pretty nice case, a Lee and Lee case, and yeah, no slot for graphics back here, but that's uh, one mod away. And it includes an FSP power supply, 80 plus, 300 watts, so that should be fine for uh, any CPU and a simple graphics card if you can mod one in. So this is the inside of the case, so at the rear here we have our SFX power supply. We've got the option for 2.5 inch hard drive or 2.5 inch up here. Plus another three to a half inch over here, and then we get a 140 millimeter fan in the front, and that's not original. That's a be quiet one, so that's quite nice. And this thing is so old actually that internal USB 3.0 didn't exist. We're actually pulling this out the pack. Now to actually build a system in this, uh, I was missing two of the most vital pieces: the motherboard and the CPU. Everything else I more or less have. So, for the motherboard, I got this off an auction site. It's, it's not new old stock, but it was uh, open but never used. So, there are like the SATA cables are missing, uh, things like that. But the motherboard is there, the IO shield is there. I also did buy a very crusty old computer. And uh, that's how I got the CPU. So, I bought an old computer, tested everything. I knew the motherboard was toast in that one sold what I didn't want, so that's how I ended up with more or less a free i5 2500K. For graphics card we got this XFX single slot card, it's an RX 462GB. I think this should fit uh, if we remove the IR bracket or if we make a space for IR bracket at the rear. Uh, and it's a low power card with an 80mm fan. For CPU cooling we have nothing but the best, it's an Octa cooler. It's the i9L, if I recall. I bought this used on the same auction site, so about half new price. So a very nice finish on this cooler, as you would expect from Nocta. So I spent a little bit extra on this budget bill on uh, fans and Nocta stuff. Uh, the reason for doing that is I actually done this combination before, and I do know uh, from doing this on an i7-3770 that I got about half the noise level and about a 7C drop in temperatures. The RAM options is more or less finalized. Uh, I have matching kit of uh, 2x4 for 1600MHz DDR3, which uh, you want about 1600 ideally. It's overclocked memory at that point on uh, Sandy Bridge. The alternative is uh, either running two 4 gig sticks, 1600, or one 4 gig and one 8 gig that I have up here. Or we can run two 8GB sticks, but this at the bottom is a 1233 MHz stick, which is the official max speed. And uh, this thing, it can kind of run 1600, but I get memory errors. Uh, it, it won't higher timings than this one. But I think I prefer 16 gigs of RAM over 8 or 12. So that's the RAM. So unmatched, but we're building on a budget here. And both of these sticks were donated from friends that they didn't want. They don't want unmatched, I think. And I agree, but for a bid like this, I take what I get. And for SSD, I uh, rescued this from my main computer. It got an upgrade a while ago. So this is one terabyte uh, SSD. I want a pretty big SSD, relatively speaking, uh, because I want to also be able to use Steam on it for uh, some of the games, 2016 and back. This thing is not gonna do all modern games, but it might do a few, and I don't play that new games. I think 2016 is about the newest. 
and I want uh, some space for virtual machines and backups and things like that, uh, copies of stuff. So uh, one, about one terabyte should be a good start. I think we'll start with the motherboard because it's untested and so is the CPU. So we need to unpack that and hook it up and test it. So this is an H61 chipset, so there's no overclocking. So yeah, this is our LGA socket. I do wonder how it looks inside. We can have a look. We might as well get the CPU out. So this is an i5 2500K. So let's open the socket. I actually checked the manual just to see what the instruction were because it's always a good day. I remember this uh, manual uh, for this type of socket. <laughs> it actually said, put in the CPU, spread paste on the CPU, but it didn't say lock it. It said lock, like put this latch down and lock it, like the, put the lid on and lock it after you apply paste and you should spread the paste. And this guy did it according to the manual and ruined the whole socket. And uh, the retailer didn't want to did not want to, you know, give me a new board, but eventually I told them, like, according to Swedish law, you have to because the manual is screwed. So what happened was every time you bought one of those motherboards at that store, in, in your basket you got, the, like, a separate manual added that you couldn't, like, remove with the correct instructions. So, yeah, I don't know why they don't have any instructions in here. But I do hate LGA, and this is the one you're supposed to pull straight up, I think. Doesn't say, oh, it's like that. The thing is, you should have manuals for all these kind of things, instructions. And I installed many LGA CPUs, and these pins look fine. Yeah. You should also check for debris, like any kind of packing material. I've seen like very small pieces of foam sometimes, anyway. And the manufacturer, they always claim like the socks are perfect. But, but yeah, I just figured it was funny this manual had no instructions at all. Even user errors based on the manual is still the responsibility of the manufacturer, I think. If you make a bad manual, it tells the user the wrong things, then you're responsible for the RMA. So yeah, I'm installing the CPU now because I don't really want to put the lid back on again once I head it off. So CPU is untested, motherboard is untested, but hopefully everything works. So we're gonna see later if we're gonna do push or pull on the CPU fan. So this is the cooler. The reason is that since we have the power supply on top and it sucks air up facing the camera, you don't want your CPU to pull down and the power supply pull up if they're located on top of each other because they're just gonna fight for the air. So I personally like to spread my pace, but that's me. So I think in this case it's easy to put the heatsink and fan combo down. And then I think we just put the motherboard straight on top. And hopefully the supplied screws are the correct one for this cooler. I'm just checking for board flex, but that seems fine. So this is our 1600 megahertz stick of 8 gigabytes. So I would buy D-Type 2 of these. So we can run 1600 megahertz overclocked and this platform can do that, no problem. But we got this 1333 megahertz stick. So it's gonna be the bar on like. We can probably run this. It can run cast 10 I know, but it didn't want to do 9, 9, 24 and other ones. So it probably wants to do 10, 10, 10, 27 or something, maybe. The question is if it's worth bothering for another few percent of performance, trying to get that overclocked. So, I think our biggest bottleneck is not gonna be RAM speed, but rather the GPU for anything graphically related. I got my test bench here, that a friend donated. Uh, same one who do donated the ballistic RAM stick. Well, that's probably not my motherboard. <laughs> I think it's just uh, the Plexi 
more accurately, being a bit flexible and not sitting on flat surface right now. So yeah, we're pretty much ready to test this. So I'm gonna get the power supply and we can hook it up. Power is on, I also change the CMOS battery. We have fan spin. So yeah, put this on the wrong right thing. Got LED on my motherboard, yeah, that came to screen. So I think we have post. Let's pause here. So we have an i5 2500K and we got the latest BIOS 0909 because I downloaded it, which makes me think this motherboard is probably used at some point. Because I doubt, I know Asus back in the day were horrible at updating the BIOS on the retail board. So I actually suspect this has been used at least to update the BIOS. So that means if I had bought an i7 3770 and would actually have worked. So there's nothing to update on the BIOS here. So we're in the BIOS. Advanced, advanced mode. So yeah, like I said, latest BIOS. I can see the build date there, so it's from 2012. So now we've got uh, 16 gigs of RAM at 1,232 MHz. Uh, it's obviously determined by, by our slow stick here, but that's fine for now. Let's see, CPU is up to 33C. That's still very good. CPU has been low limit. Yeah, 600 is probably fine. I don't think I'm gonna see lower. We might have to change that when we change the fan. You can set 500 for that. So we should be able to use the exit and save change reset here. Yeah. So yeah, that's fan speed is much better. I wish we could do our own profiles, but yeah. This will do for now, so I think it's time to put in a graphics card and a temporary boot drive. I have an old Windows 10 installed I can use, and now we can test out the graphics card. So I'm running uh, Unique Haven here. Uh, I'm using my capture card. I could probably record straight from Windows 10 now with this GPU, but uh, I don't want to use the GPU stress it for that. I just want to render something. So I'm using my U cheap USB capture card. So it's a uh, 30 FPS at 1080p max. So uh, the frame rate isn't as smooth as the frame count that might show. Like we see now, over 100. We're not gonna see over 30 in practice on the recording. Just have that in mind, that's why everything is choppy. So around 1100 megahertz. I think you should boost to 1200 or something for the full version. Well, there we had 1200. But we also have GPU monitoring up here, down for Windows here. So I'm trying to stay at 100%. So what I'm inter interested in is temperature, and we're on 62C at 30% fan speed. Uh, so we have new paste and the same paste we're gonna use when we're done with the build. Uh, we've got RPM down here, it's still 1500. But right now I'm interested in these values here. I suppose this wouldn't be a 1984 video if we didn't take something apart and modify it a bit. So I know this card tends to run a little bit hot if it's in cramped environment, even with a case fan. That ran perfectly fine in uh, Haven. But uh, yeah, I do want to take it apart and uh, going to take off this shroud, which you don't need to usually to replace it, but again, I do it just for demonstration purposes. But to get a better sense of the heat sink size and things like that, if you take that off. So basically, we have RAM chips under here that have no contact with the heat sink. So to more efficiently use this cooler, we could place thermal pads for those RAM chips. So my hope is we can shave off a couple of degrees on the temperature of the GPU with, uh, with some thermal pads for the RAM. If we can get the RAM to run co co colder, then we can use these areas here more efficiently.
So let's use some electronic cleaner. It melts the paste. It's mostly isopropanol alcohol with some uh, additives uh, that dilutes uh, some glue like tape, glue on table stuff. But anyway, it makes cleaning very easy. And you don't have to be abrasive with brushes and stuff. You can clearly see the RAM here and the GP obviously. And here is our cooler. So it goes on like so. The RAM would be here and here, and this is the G GPU obviously. So it's quite obvious like that. It's mirrored now. And I have uh, checked, it seems to be one millimeter. This barely squeezes in, and there's some like protection on either side. So hopefully this is thick enough. We don't want it to be too thick because we don't want to lift the cooler off the die. So we're gonna cut some pieces here and put them in place. We have our pads here, and I have made a marking on both sides on the film, so we remember to remove it. It's very easy to forget uh, when it's transparent, especially on the side you're removing last. That's our pads. And now we remove the film. And we drew a dry mount here. So we need to have everything lined up. Just looking for like what seems to be good contact and this seems to be very good contact there so this outside here i'm not as happy with that i think there is some old flexing of the pcb uh, don't ask me why because there's no reason for it that i can see but what i think we can do is put some paste on the side where we have the heat sink on the pads which is so yeah, I'm not too worried about like uneven pressure on the, on the die because the pads are just about the right height so I think we can reapply paste. Put a little bit of paste on the turn pad on this side. Just a very small amount so it doesn't squeak, squeak, go out everywhere. Most of the heat is in the middle anyway. And these pads are quite uh, hard ones so I don't want to put like a, another half a millimeter or something. These are pretty stiff pads. So it's not like the very soft ones you tend to get for M.2 drives and stuff. Or some modern graphics cards. These are pretty hard. So that's why I rather put some paste to will work as a little bit of a cushion but uh, also fill any gaps as on one ship hopefully so yeah very small little mod here best case it improves temperatures worst case <laughs> this makes it worse but uh, i think the most likely scenario is that that didn't do that much but we'll find out but there should be some pads down there So, put it back together and then give, give it another test spin. Let's put the car back into the system and uh, rerun uh, Unique Haven and see if we did improve it or not. We're back again and let the system uh, heat up and settle in. And also went back and checked my previous recording. And the highest I saw in that one was 63. The highest I've seen here is 63. Essentially seeing around 62 plus and minus 1. And 30 percent and same RPM. So no real difference sadly and hope for. I suppose Gamers Nexus would have uh, approved of uh, extra pads. They seem to like extra pads. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways we can move on with the build now. I have stripped the case of uh, like the power supply and everything, pretty much everything, because we're gonna do some mods to it. So the idea is to get the graphics card in here, obviously, and uh, can't get it in like flush. If this was was more modern, we wouldn't have DVI. So the, the basic idea is to obviously get the card in here, 
develop port with hit now. Uh, so my plan is mainly to just make the holes for the IO output here. I think that's the easiest and use these holes here to secure the card to the case. So the card will end up somewhere around here. So roughly this height, but in here, you'll be fine. And I think for extra ventilation, I think I want a row of holes there, there and up here. Uh, square ones, similar to this, but imagine they want an opening down here. This is factory for the USB. So I have to like draw everything up we need here. I'm gonna put some tape on so I know what to drill and file. So the motherboard is in here with a spacer under there and the graphics card is in. So I essentially put a piece of tape like this on the inside to mark where the graphics card is, the DVI port. And then I, when I got a, like a corner, I transfer that out here. You might see it's actually tilting a little bit to the left and that's intentional to get more uh, clearance for the fan. Might still have to do a hole over here, but I figure a little bit of tilt uh, hasn't hurt anyone. And then I printed these out on my printer and put some double-sided tape on them. So these are black spots are 10 by 10 millimeters. Those are gonna be ventilation exhaust. So yeah, I have to drill those and file them out and then we can remove all this when we've done that and put some little bit of uh, paint on the inside. So it's gonna look like, um, like this whole factory. So I'm gonna go out and do that and uh, get back in again. I have been out uh, drilling and filing for hours and hours. So what I did after I drilled and filed them, I took a marker pen uh, ar around the edges so it looks anodized, uh, so it blends in. So I can put up the graphics card here now, it should fit quite well I think. We need to replace the uh, CPU fan and this cable is very long, which is nice if I needed a long cable. So I'm thinking how I should hide this. I think the easiest way would to be have, just put it like that and uh, then basically shove everything underneath here, under the motherboard because we have that extra tray, so that should be fine. And that's sturdy. So the motherboard with the graphics card is going in and hopefully this will fit. And the graphics card is in place. I have uh, secured it with uh, these two nuts here. They are somewhat shortened. Uh, that also means they can't really tighten down the cable all the way like the last millimeter. Could modify a cable for that. But uh, yeah, it seems to work fine enough. Uh, also, the display port and the HDMI is a little bit further in than I like, but it seems to be fine with the HDMI there. And I don't think I'm gonna use display port. This month I'm gonna use is mainly DVI. This is gonna convert it to USB 2.0, but it doesn't matter. So, under the hard drive left here. So, I think that's everything. So, we can actually test it now. I'm gonna test it with this side on and uh, gonna leave that side off and then put it on so you can see how bad the temperatures might get. The computer is up and running and Haven has been running for a little while to heat up uh, the GPU and CPU. So we can have a look at the temperatures here. So 69, fan RPM 1700. So yeah, pretty good temp still, but we're up. I've seen 70 a lot of the time. Uh, so we're definitely up like uh, 7 or 8 degrees. So we're going to put the panel on. Uh, 
on for a while and we can definitely see the fan RPM is quite high now, higher than I like, but the temperatures are perfectly fine. So up from uh, 69 to 72. It has to, had to increase the RPM of the fan quite a lot, over a thousand RPM. So making a hole in the side of the case would make sense to get the RPM down there. So I ended up making a hole in the side here with the hole saw. So I think it turned out pretty well. So I had a piece of mesh from a Lee and Lee case. Cut this out to fit and epoxy glued it into place. I don't think it looks better than uh, a clean side, but uh, it does help with temperatures a lot and fan speed. So we can see our temperatures here at 66 degrees on the GPU and fan RPM at 2150 or so. So quite a good improvement from around 3000 RPM. So this is my mobile workstation when I go to either more modern LAN parties or when I go to France to fix and build retro computers. So I need something with me, something that isn't a laptop. I think it turned out pretty well. So these holes at the back, they really made a difference. Uh, so in the next video, I would like to install my one terabyte SSD and install Linux Mint on that and uh, install Steam among other things. But I think it would be fun just to make a how do you install Linux and how do you play games on Linux these days. Uh, I think a lot of the people in my audience already know how to do it. I see a lot of comments uh, where people want me to install Linux on my retro computers. But I prefer to do that on my modern machines. All, pretty much all my modern machines runs Linux of some sort. So yeah, why not do that on this one? Because it makes no sense for me to run Windows on this one when I use Linux on every other desktop or laptop I have. So yeah, thank you for watching and have a good day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.